Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here as ever. First things first, Joey put lights on the Christmas tree. And now, I want to do a little tweaking, a little modification to how this motor is held on to my Pilkington power hammer. It's really not the most rigid thing in the world. And I want to fix that. So I'm going to do a little bit of fabrication so we can bolt something in that's a little bit tighter. So I'm going to fabricate up some steel that's going to help make that mount a little bit more rigid. I won't be able to mount it today though because I'm an umpty and I left my SDS drill at home. But what I will be able to do is do a little bit of fabric cobbling and just get it ready to mount and bolt down tight tomorrow once I bring the drill back in. So, I have this fabric cobbled up. I used the MIG weld, which obviously made things go easier. A lot of people ask, why is it I TIG weld so much? And it's because I know nothing about TIG welding, and it's very difficult, and I want to learn, and the way I learn is by doing it. However, I wanted to get this done because I knew that something good was going to arrive, and you can see. I have a pallet that has just showed up, and it's got seven bags of refractory cement. I also have this, which is a cardboard tube. Oh yes, it is time to get back, get back into making this foundry work. But first of all, have you noticed? Look how beautiful the workshop is looking. Look at all the wonderful saw blades from my old workshop that are now here up on the wall. Doesn't it look fantastic? Joey's been putting all of those up. I still need to get my SDS drill back so I can drill this into the concrete, or at least drill holes for bolts for the concrete. There Set that down there, do that another day, and for now, it's time to try and work out how I'm gonna get this cardboard and the cardboard I have inside to work for a much better, more professional mold, but for the refractory of our furnace. You can see, this is a cardboard tube. You'll remember I said that I was gonna use plywood. Well, I then watched some YouTube videos and I saw a guy use a cardboard tube and I thought, cardboard seems like that's even easier than plywood because it can come already round. I then proceeded to call up about 15 different places to find out a place where I could buy cardboard tube. I found a place where I could buy cardboard tube. I got it on a next day delivery and we've got ourselves a cardboard tube that is 10 inches in diameter. We're gonna do all of this with cardboard. And so I'm gonna take a hole saw and I'm gonna line up exactly where these holes for the burner jets need to be. Then open them up. Double check. There we go. That looks like a furnace to me. Okay, dokey. So, it's starting to look like we're getting somewhere. That will go in there. I need to cut this up. Cut this into three. Zip, zip, zip. There are 
our burner holds, oh yes. And then I'll just have to center this. Oh yes, this is gonna work so much better. This is gonna be a million times better. This is gonna be fantastic. So I also need to work out how it is that this is gonna stay centered. And one of the videos that I watched, thank you. I actually watched this yesterday after somebody emailed me the link. So thank you very much to whoever emailed it to me and thank you to the person that made this video. He used a bucket and he also used a piece of PVC pipe to help keep his bucket centered. Oh. So I'm gonna find the center here with some chalk. There we go, there's rough center. I'm gonna give it a center punch. <laughs> I just realized it'd be better to drill from the other side. All right, let's drill a hole. There goes that drill bit. <laughs> Woohoo! All right, so I think on this particular one, I got plenty more refractory material. I'm just gonna do two bricks. That's gonna establish the height that I want for the floor. And that also means that I can get this in there. I'm gonna drill a hole in the lid of this bucket. Woohoo! Um, oh yeah. And then the pipes can be slid in the burners. <laughs> this is so much better. Holy moly, this is a million times better. Yes, I'm pleased with that. What I now need to do is I need to glue these pipes in place so that all I'll have to do is drop it down, twist it in, and then start pouring. So I've got 175 kilos of refractory cement ready. We're just gonna go with the two bricks. The PVC pipe is ready. We've duct taped this up. We've glued in the cardboard burner tubes. I duct taped this so that we get a little bit of an emblance of uh, water resistance to the cardboard so it doesn't get soggy and collapse. I am nervous that it's gonna collapse. However, I have the top of the lid here. We're gonna be putting weight on the top and hopefully um, it'll, it'll stay rigid to a certain extent despite all the amount of force that's gonna be put on it. Now this makes it really important that I pour in the concrete, the refractory from all sides at the same time so that we're equalizing the pressure around the cylinder and not making it kind of cave in at one point. Joe, it is time to do this. We're gonna pour the furnace. So last time, I think I got it too wet on the first go and even definitely too wet on the second go. I paid a little more attention to how much water I was using. And for this 50 kilos, I only used about two liters of water. It's an astonishingly little amount, but that's a lot closer to like what you actually need. We've given it a good mix. We've got the floor cast. It's looking great. Let's do it. Let's put it in. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, there we go. Woo! Okay, we're in place. It looks good. The PVC pipe is ready. Once we start filling, we're gonna fill this with a couple of weights and some coke fuel. The idea is, is that that's gonna help this keep its form with all the pressure. Great idea on that, Joe. Here we go. Let's make up some more refractory. Oh, oh, oh yeah, let's keep it centered. And we're gonna cast this bad boy. So out of the rest of this concrete, we're gonna cast a lid and we're gonna get a pipe to put in the bottom so it has a hole so the gases can come out. Didn't you used to be a drummer, Joe? I still drum. 
Right now, we're gonna put these little bits of steel in there, nestle them on down. These are gonna form some little handle like Watch My What's It. Allow us to get a grab on the lid, little little handle on the lid. Hey, hey, there we go. Oh, look at that. That looks like a lid to me. Look at how fantastic the furnace is looking. Oh yeah. Killer day, Joe, great work. Boy, oh boy, does that feel good to have that cast, and I think everything is looking just fantastic. Do you remember the collaboration that I did with Liam Hoffman of Hoffman Blacksmithing? I forged out a beautiful billet to Damascus, and then forged out a one-piece integral guard, integral bolster, and integral pommel Egyptian Kopesh. I then sent it over to America to Liam, who is an incredibly talented blacksmith and bladesmith. He then ground it. He's made a series of videos on YouTube, and I haven't updated you guys on this project, but his series of videos is completely complete, and I implore you, I really highly recommend that you guys go and check it out. I'm gonna link to his series of videos down below so you can see the completion of that beautiful Egyptian Kopesh. He's done a stunning job. He is, uh, he is truly an outstanding, unbelievable craftsman. Love what he's done. Make sure you check out those videos and also subscribe to both of us on Instagram. Him at Hoffman Blacksmithing, me at Alex Steele. So then you can stay up to date because we are indeed planning to sell this Egyptian Kopesh, which is gonna be really, really exciting. I can't wait for that. So make sure that you stay tuned on those social networks so that you can be ready for when it does launch and when it does go up for sale once we've got some really nice photos of it. That's gonna be super exciting. Big thank you to Liam for doing this collaboration with me and doing such a stellar job on this project. Make sure you guys go check out his video down below. Check out his Instagram. Check out the incredible work that he does. And ladies and gentlemen, on that note, this Building the Foundry Part 4 is over and we're going to be back to this in a couple of days. Once this refractory is cured enough for us to start slowly bringing up the temperature, driving off all the water and doing the final cure of the refractory before we start melting metal, which I am so excited to do. Trying to learn something new. I love it. Love learning. Love trying new things. Can't believe how, how honored I am that I can bring you guys along. So thank you. Please do subscribe to this channel if you're new. Check out Joey's channel. His link is in the description below. Very talented blacksmith also. Check out Liam's series where he finishes the Kopesh. I'm going to see you tomorrow on the next episode. Always fun things to do. Always fun things to learn. And I can't wait to bring you along.